And then I realized, wait a second, this was happening. What, what, what would happen to me is uh, two things. One, I would get Jesus. In other words, Jesus would, before I really knew him in the same way that you would from going to Sunday school or whatever, Jesus would come and protect me, you know, by, you know, I, somehow there was something that would tell me you're all right. You're a person in your own right. Don't let them cow you and make you depressed. Go bow your head and go hide somewhere. You're legit the way you are. See what I mean? And then that, that, that had to come into it. I had to have that ministering. So I had to learn to rely on God from a very early age, from like age five or six on. I had to rely completely on God because the same things that happened today with sabotage and gang stalking and all those things, they all happened back at that age. It's exactly the same. There's no difference today now than there was back then. So it's not because you do something or don't do something that the persecution occurs. It's a spiritual difference oh, that, yeah. that causes them to manifest and they are just programmed to go after you and discredit you and hurt you. There's nothing you can do about it too. If you're met, chosen by God and you're meant for him, you will not be able to conform to them even if you jump through their hoops and you do all their disgusting things they want you to do. It, you still won't be, you, they, will, they will still not accept you. That's why I say, you people, if you're meant for God, don't bother trying to please them because they will never accept you. Like Alan here, they would just use Alan and try to feed off Alan. And, that, and, and if Alan it was too savvy for them in that department, then they will throw Alan out. You know, but then, I wasn't too savvy, I'll be honest. I spent like a year and a half in that church because I was just so brainwashed. I just wanted to make it work. I was so like desperate, like, no, these are my, you know, like, these are my no, bro did. brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. I just tried and tried yeah. it. Yeah, we but did. eventually it became so obvious because I, at one point I walked in and I was, they were praying and they were praying, like I said, they were praying curses and all in, in agreement and they just didn't say my name, but I knew it, it was, you know, they weren't that careless. But they, it was obvious it was yeah. for me because I had sure. offended someone. Yeah, Alan, you know? we, call those, uh, we call those whammies, man. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, a yeah, lot of the yeah. time it works out that way. Yeah, people will. Hey, people guys, do. I got to go. Hey, well, thanks oh, so much Barbara, for checking in, Barb. Have a go. great day. Uh, Great message for you today, too, but I got to talk to a customer. Okay, okay. well, happy Hold Independence up. Day for you and all the gang there. Okay. Call back when you're done. God bless you. Okay. Call back, yeah. 508 908 9189. I'm sorry, 505 908 9189. That's 505 908 9189. Or Metazef, Skype in here. This is a great opportunity if you have something to get off your chest, something that is bothering you about this uh, a completely unfair and amazing situation that, you know, apparently people be in the pulpits don't seem to think is important enough to address. And that includes those of you who feel like you're being gang stalked. Gang stalking is just an extension of the same thing we're talking about. In that sense, we've been gang stalked since we were kids. And, um, it's just the people that you run into are of a different tribe, and they're going to reject you. But, for, but yeah. first, they're going to want to have fun with you. Uh, yeah, some okay. of them, sure. Some, because that gives them power. They derive their power from your pain, <laughs> right? I exactly, mean, Frankie. You and know, the, the and... mentality that enjoys, you know, torture. Did you know that the... <laughs> I that... kind of have a, like a, that won't be necessary kind of vibe, and they, Did... they, they, really, uh, they really have a hard time getting to me. For the most part. I saw someone who's got the same issue. They're a total lamb, and they were t betrayed by the church system. They're a young person. You know, young meaning like around 21. And um, so they were, uh, you know, just dealing with it, but they were so, had a heart so much filled by God. Their attitude was like, you know, I'm, I just love everybody, even if you talk bad about me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the per perfect picture of Christ in a person. Right there, that was beautiful. Even though you could tell this person has suffered, you knew also the Lord was going to take care of, of this one, you know. But that's it. I mean, you know, this, this young uh, sister in Christ, she had it, you know, at least then. But, you, you can talk bad about me. You can... Uh, now, the other response is to be more like Phil Collins. Remember Genesis, he said, I don't care anymore. Remember I covered that? <laughs> 
tune. I don't care anymore. Yeah, he said you could drag my name all over the place. I don't care anymore. There is, remember that, Frankie? We, we went through a phase where we just said, well, I don't care anymore. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, you we can. tried that. We tried that back back a few years ago. You know, well, I don't care. Yeah, yeah that doesn't work either. You know, I I, I do dig the. Uh, I, here's this thing, man. I I am starting <laughs> to be kind of aware of an, like an incoming prayer. You know. Yeah. And 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 I'm kind of into this this notion that what if there's some way to like you know you pray back. It's like, oh, bless you too, whoever you were. <laughs> you know, if you would go back in the same direction. That's kind of cool. I don't know, man, because, you know, it's not all bad out there. I mean, you do run into it infrequently. You, you, so, do. you do. A brother or sister on the street, and you yeah. just really click and bang, man. Same tribe, same yeah. conversation, same thing, right? Right. Yeah. Just an really extension of what, what, another lamb, you know. Just like what cool. we're talking about today, just like continuous and, and to not be hurt all the time. And, um, all I can say is, you know, we've got to go through this period mm-hmm. in order to get to that being with the Lord, both physically and in spirit. So there is this final period of uh, this final test, if you will. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so it's a joy to go through because we know that our Lord will comfort us. Even right now, he's comforting those of Amen. you out there. You are not alone out there in Radio Land. You're not That's alone. That's right, Steph. Tell them. The people like us are all over the world thinking, am I the only one, or is it just me and my husband, or maybe my friend, tell them, Jeff, tell no, them they're no, not alone, no, there's a alone. million of us, tell Right, them, and we've been, them. and a lot of you have had these feelings since you were children, and it's That's been right. a long haul, it's been a long haul, but God brought you through, you were born, because I do believe that Americans who are lambs right now, and who've been that way, you know, and have been kind of suffering, you have to realize God put you here as a witness also of his justice to, to view and be amazed with and to give glory to his moving at this time. You're, you're not here to get the brunt of punishment. You're here to be a witness to what he's going to what he's doing and is about to do. And that's, that's kind of a big responsibility. But, we, but he always has witnesses when he moves. You know, and we witness good and bad things. We witness, for example, his moving. Um, we witness his not holding back the flood. He didn't hold back the tornadoes in Joplin, Missouri. But we also witness the good things people are doing to help each other in times of crisis as well. So it's not right. all bad. That's right. But That's right. You know, you're not alone out there. That's the main thing. You are not alone. A lot of you have had these feelings. Some, some of you have been uh, gang stalked, and you've been you came through to the Lord through that. And then you realize that gang stalking is a spiritual reality. It's not just they decide to target you for no good, you know, for, for, for any number of reasons, including like there's a lot of women that think, well, they're targeting me because I'm a pretty girl or whatever. Therefore, they're going to target me and it's all perverse sexual stuff. That's not exactly, that may be part of it, but that's not it. It's there. You're not one of them is why you get targeted. <laughs> You know. So is that one of those Amen. things where if, uh, if, if God fell a tree in the forest and no one was, was there to, to hear it and see it, did it really happen kind of thing, the witnesses? Is that what that's all about? God always, because... well, throughout history, he's always had witnesses. Yeah, why do you think that is? You know, even like in Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, Abraham was like a witness. That is true, yeah. Some... <laughs> Few survived, right? I right, mean, but but I mean, he always like like with the death of all the Syrians, you know, and and all that. There were witnesses that would write about it later in the Bible, and like with with the uh, with the golden calf worshippers, when when uh, Moses came back down the hill and he saw that was going on, there were witnesses that had to witness what they did, and then God's punishment of them, and then be a witness to it. And um, you know, it's 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 uh, it's weird. He wants a witness for what whatever he's going to do, if it's good or bad, whatever it is, uh, it's always going to be good in the end. It's always going to be based on perfect love and perfect justice. But you Amen. know, but we want to have a witness for his moving, so we give glory. God's always going to have his witnesses that give glory to him when he moves to say, Lord, there's no one like you. You're the only one who could solve this situation. 
come Lord Jesus, come quickly, you know, and then we witness his coming. We witness his putting down the uh, evildoers, the earth dwellers, yeah. the destroyers of the earth, the people yeah. that are Armageddon in, in the, in the mm -hmm. land of Megiddo, uh, when he puts down all the weapons of mass destruction so they don't even work, when he protects Israel, all the things that end up happening, like he wants us right now to be a witness to Israel. He's going to do something with Israel where everyone comes against Israel and then he's going to do this amazing thing. They are really lining up right now. I mean, right, right. gosh. Okay, but we're witnesses of things like, of big things like that and little things too, like individuals in, in different towns, you know, are there, if you're a lamb, you're there also as a witness to how God's going to mm -hmm. deal with the mayor and the, and the townsfolk and, and other people. And, and some may come to you for a word and then you're there to give them a word. Or they're there to minister the things about the Lord and to, to be a witness unto the Lord in your testimony to other people about what the Lord has done for you and, and is doing and will do uh, based on his word. So all of this is we're called to that purpose, to be thou, those lights in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it may not be the easiest job in the world, but it's a lot easier than being under the sword of Damocles. Amen. It's a lot easier than being under that judgment sword. I'd rather be a witness than under the judgment, wouldn't Amen. you? Okay, so Jesus... Amen. And the darker it gets, this, you know, I feel like I'm just a little insignificant light. I mean, I'm just like that little light under the basket. But as the world gets darker and darker and darker and darker, even a little me, little me in, in Aztec, New Mexico, who's n nothing, my light's got to shine. So they get darker, we get brighter. For well, the to Lord. me... To me, if we you, can hold on, hold on to that faith. To me, you're Amen. not some insignificant person. You know, I can see to God you're not an insignificant person. But to oh, the, I know that. But I mean, as the world would be, view me. But I'm see, the world is see. There's their first mistake. They laugh at there's the There's that lamb. first mistake. The first mistake is thinking that lambs are just some foolish kind of. Uh, candy from a baby type of thing just stupid fools that's our brainwashing that's what they brainwashed us to believe but they but they don't understand it and you know and they don't get it even even mm -hmm. um they don't understand that the first will be last and the last will be first that's right and that means that they're going to be last so the people who are getting at the worst here the ones who are being gang stalked and and persecuted yeah, yeah. I mean, my life's, a, my life's a breeze compared to many, many people. They are going to be the first if they can just hold on to their faith like a little child. Hold That's, the line, Jesus right, Trish? Said, you can't enter mm -hmm. the kingdom of God unless you have the faith of a little child. You're totally dependent on him. And man's uh, uh, hearts will fail for, for fear when they see mm -hmm. all this coming. All this mm -hmm. stuff that's coming, that a lot of people are just not going to be able to handle it. But the lambs will be able. We'll, we're we're broken. The Bible says we're broken, but not torn well, apart. You know that one. You know we're they're smashed. But we that's what we're feeling. But God, we're not going down. The Holy Spirit's going to bring us right back up. Well, they we also they also see us as a force of destruction. In other words, what God does with the, they see us bringing that in, and it to a certain extent that's also true, that we are the destroyers of their happy utopia. <laughs> yeah, we're with, we're with. Holding it, you know, it says in the, the New Testament, when God removes uh, what, whatever and he comes, and they've always said it's the Holy Spirit, maybe God, maybe that's the time when the Lord does take his, his lambs out. And can you imagine this world with no lambs? I think the lambs are also like witnesses, like the two witnesses. I think if they get rid yeah, of all the lambs, do. that's the end of, uh, you know, that's the end of things. Maybe one witness is our Jewish brothers and sisters. Maybe the other witness is the is the Gentile brothers. Yeah, Who knows? I know that it it does get it, it's very very interesting what's going on right now, and I do yeah. deal with that so, dur during the week on the. Uh, uh, oh, hey, if you guys want to write me.